The other day when I was trawling the internet for list feature ideas I could repurpose for my Friday videos, I noticed a common theme among many of the articles. Look how beautiful this game is. I know! I love to live there in real life. Would you? Would you really? You want to step outside on your morning commute and get mauled to death by a three-foot sentient mushroom, do you? Of course you don't, which is why this week's video is about the seven most beautiful game worlds that want to kill you. Worlds that are gorgeous, dense and immersive, but with barbarous thorns of difficulty lurking under the high-def rose petals. Worlds that make you go, ah, one minute and then, ah, the next. Worlds like Eorzea from Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn, a beautiful MMO that knits deserts, forests and nice looking crystally things into a lovely open world jumper. A lazy analogy that I'll continue anyway by saying that all the sewing needles used to make the open world jumper have been left in it still. So it's nice, but it's got dangerous spits in it. How many is this one? Seven. Oh, so I've got to think of six more ways to say that still. Indirectly, it's the seductive beauty of Final Fantasy XIV that makes it so dangerous. You'll stroll out on your first quest, kill a few level 2 ladybirds to prove you know what a sword is, and you'll just keep walking. Look at it, look at the colours, listen to the happy music, check out all the other players having a wonderful time, and you push onwards, thirsty for the graphical wonders that are slowly revealed as the world map peels away. For impatient players like me, A Realm Reborn devolves into a new game. What level are these monsters, and can I run past without them noticing me? A bit like what happens when Dave has one of his angry LARP sessions and decides he's going to guard the fridge. Next up, we've got the mythical island of Yamatai, the setting for 2013's Tomb Raider reboot, and of course the PS4 definitive edition a year later. Yamatai is an impressive place with its rugged cliffs, dramatic coastline, and indigenous population of slow motion attack wolves. But even more impressive is the fact it's cursed by the angry spirit of one Queen Himiko, a lady who likes to fling storms at passing aircraft and who inspires a cult following of gun-wielding religious maniacs. And that's not mentioning their traps, spike pits, river rapids with branches in them. Every time Lara's in the water she's getting skewered by something, almost as if the world was designed to be dangerous. Did you say designed to be dangerous? And did you say Bloodborne in the same sentence? Well, you should have done, because Bloodborne is the game that epitomises this list more than any other. Every corner of its brooding gothic world is out to kill you, packed as it is with rabid dogs, bestial terrors, and a priest with a penchant for killing you about eight times before you finally learn you can hurt him with a children's music box. And if you're thinking, wait a minute, Bloodborne's not beautiful, then I'd counter that by saying any game that makes you stop every five minutes to press the share button is probably doing something right in the looks department. Nathan can't get enough of it, uploading beautiful shots of Lovecraftian splendour by the hour, along with irritating half-boast, half-spoiler captions. Oh, just beating the eighth boss in Bloodborne. I soloed it on my first Go. Oh, wait till you see it. Wait till you see the eighth boss in Bloodborne that I soloed on my first go, because I'm probably better than you and definitely further than you in Bloodborne. But when you do get there, Rob, do you want some help? Not from you. Because I did do it on my first go. Anyway, the point is, Bloodborne is beautiful in a dark, menacing, Gormenghastian kind of way. Yeah, that's right. I read all three Gormenghast books in one week on my first go. Ooh, tra la la, look at me and my gang of cool party members who I care deeply about, walking through the hinterlands in Dragon Age Inquisition, holding hands with the graphics and killing all the monsters. They're not that hard, really. This game's easy. I don't even know why I've put it in this list. Maybe because it's so beautiful, it makes up for the fact it isn't even slightly dangerous. Oh, uh, yeah. 
Dragon Age. That's the rub. Spend too long gawping at all the pretty and something will come along and smack you right in the HPs. Probably a dragon, an enemy that's essentially the world of Inquisition in microcosm, beautiful, smooth and deadly. And they're not like Skyrim's dragons, the ones that land and patiently wait while you bludgeon them to death. No, Dragon Age's dragons are quick and won't think twice about belching fire into your face. Flipping wildlife, eh? Why can't it just mind its own business while I strip the land of all natural resources, like in nice, peaceful, never getting attacked by animals real life? Well, because then the next entry on our list wouldn't be on our list because it wouldn't be as dangerous. Far Cry 4's Kirat is up there with the best looking open world playgrounds on PS4, a yawning stretch of verdant forest, hostile Himalayan mountains and really lovely water. There are nasty lunatics with silly hair on this island, yes, but the main reason you'll be in almost constant mortal peril is the kill-happy cast of belligerent fauna. There are birds of prey, there are bears, there are big cats, there are honey badgers. I knew you'd come out of that. But you're not a honey badger, are you? You're a puppet. What? I haven't written anything for you. You're on your own. Well, go on then, do something funny. Fallout 3 is another one of those games that's beautiful in quite an unconventional way. It's sickly and green and everything's a complete mess, like Dave when he gets the ferry. But for some reason, I just can't help but move really slowly through it, like I'm recording something for an E3 demo and taking the marvellous wreckage of civilization. Familiar landmarks punctuate the Capital Wasteland, like the Washington Memorial and the park below that's now a super mutant shooting gallery, but this time it's the environment itself that poses the main threat. And that's because everything's been contaminated by nuclear fallout. Take a sip of water and your Geiger counter has a breakdown. You're effectively drinking death, but you've got no choice. That and the Myalurks, which are like radioactive zombie crab things. Because, as we all know, that's what happens when you drop bombs. The animals get really big and strong and violent, and some of them, like the ants, learn to breathe fire. The final entry on our list is The Last of Us, a stark reminder of what can happen when no one does any gardening for ages. Leaves, bloody leaves all over the place, and mushrooms bored of just growing in the mud start growing out people's faces and turning them into brain-dead fungus zombies. Much like Fallout 3's irradiated wasteland, there's a bleak and haunting beauty to the apocalypse of The Last of Us, the crumbling remains of civilization standing as a melancholy reminder of what we've all lost, while the infected and society's unsavoury types roam about killing everything that isn't already dead. How nice. Why can't we all just get along and stroke giraffes? Well, there you go, seven games that are like jumpers with needles in them. For increasingly stale jokes every Friday, make sure you hit subscribe and give us a like too, because the like button is there, so you may as well. See you next week.